Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to build this really simple game in Figma using just Figma prototyping. Nothing else, just Figma prototyping, a bunch of artboards and that's it. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So before we jump into Figma and we start prototyping this entire thing, let me give you the basic idea behind the game. Uh, the idea that I thought when I started building the game. By the way, the game is really easy. Uh, the screens are really easy to build. The only tricky part is basically connecting one screen to the other via a prototyping method or a prototyping setting. That setting requires a lot of trial and errors. So that's where the tricky part is. It took me some time to figure out the settings between the different screen, but making the screen themselves is really easy. So let me just quickly explain you the game. So what I wanted to build was, let's say you have some sort of a screen here and I wanted to have some sort of an explosive ball which is like this and it's it may be resting on a sling something like a sling something like this um, but I didn't use a sling because when I started animating a vector sling like this like a simple line in Figma uh, and try to animate this via smart animate when you pull it down and you release it that animation was not working because Figma was breaking the entire vector and it was not looking good. So that's a limitation I think with Figma, it cannot animate the vector uh, assets directly. So that's why I chose a different path. I thought of that I'll use the explosive ball, but instead of placing it on a sling, I'll place it on a spring. So we'll have something like this. I'll have a spring here, okay? And then I thought I'll, let's say, we'll have some sort of balloons here on the top. And when the uh, explosive ball hits the balloon, they will uh, explode, okay? So the first frame will be like this, just the way you do motion animation by frame by frame. You have to do the same thing here as well. So the first thing is like this, which is basically the resting stage. Nothing is being touched as of now. And this will become our first stage. The second stage will be basically when um, you have the spring and you try to compress the spring. Okay. And the ball is here with the ball. Okay. So you're trying to move everything down. And, uh, and at this stage as well, the position of the balls is exactly at the same position, uh, the balloons actually at the same position, but now you have pushed the ball down. So this will become your second stage. In your third stage, what you want to do is you basically release this entire thing. Okay. So you release the ball and since you have released it, since you have released the spring, the spring does not go to its original state, which is this. It goes a little bit higher if you have known how spring works. So basically the spring will expand and will go even higher than its original state. and at this time the ball will be on the top the explosive ball will be on the top and it's the same time colliding with the balloons here on the top okay so this will become your third stage and the fourth stage is basically when the explosion happens okay so we'll have an explosion here because balloon has already uh, okay wow the balloon has already uh, collided with the entire uh, explosive ball so you have an explosion here and at the same time what will happening is the spring is actually going down right so the spring is going down and it has gone down from its original state and has gone below so it's a little bit compressed it's not exactly at the same level it's below than this and it's here now if you want to make it more realistic what you can also do is you can create a few more frames in which the spring is moving up and down because the spring does not come to a rest immediately right so this is the entire idea behind the game and uh, once you have all these screens ready you just have to prototype it one by one like we really simply have to prototype it uh, but only the settings between this prototyping is what is uh, important right is what is what is tricky so let's build the screens first in figma and then we'll start prototyping so let's get started in figma so to get started in figma you need an artboard we have an iphone 13 artboard here and my trigger would be this Angry Bird image that I got it from an internet. It's a PNG image, nothing much, nothing, nothing fancy there. Um, so the ball that I was explaining, the explosive ball that I was explaining, I'm just replacing that with this Angry Bird image. So it has this Angry Bird reference here, okay? So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing that you need to build is basically add balloons on the top and that's really easy to make. So just create a circle and um, give it some sort of a fill let's say i'm giving it a pink fill and then give it a stroke and give the stroke in the inside uh, strokes okay don't give a center or an outside stroke give it a inside stroke uh, create a 
it's a stroke of white color and instead of 100% opacity just give it something like 40% or 30% and then start increasing the stroke width okay so you will suddenly see something like this okay and this looks really good actually if you see so just keep on increasing the stroke width till you feel something comfortable is there and then basically you can if you want you can also increase the size and your balloon is ready uh, what i've also done is i've just added a very simple uh, white sort of uh, vector here so that i can give it something like a white color and it looks like a shiny blob okay and um, it's like this right so it just looks like something shining on it and then you your circle or your balloon is actually ready okay the first balloon is ready just duplicate it bunch of time and create a bunch of balloon on the top so let's quickly do that so I've added balloons here, different colors balloon. So now my scene is almost ready. Now the next thing that we need is basically the spring. To create the spring, it's really easy. Just select your oval tool and create an oval like this. Uh, don't give it a fill as of now, just give it a stroke. So remove this and give it a visible stroke, something like this so that it's visible. Now what you need to do is just duplicate it bunch of times. And if you have watched my shots, I've explained how to do this duplication. Just hit Command D, Command D, and it automatically place all of them in that same distance as a previous one. So I'll keep on doing Command D, and I'll just keep on placing it for me and here. So now this looks like a spring, right? Now just select all of them and do Option Command G and place them in a group. Now once that is done, the center line it. And what you have to do is just come here and select the topmost uh, spring and give this the fill. Only this one has a fill. So now we are almost done. So we have our spring ready. I'm just going to call it spring. And then we have our balloons ready on the top. And we have our character ready. So now everything is almost ready. Now let's build the different stages. So as we discussed, the second stage was where the uh, bird and where basically we are pressing down the spring and the spring is in a compressed state so to build that that's also very easy what you have to do is just come here and select all the circles that you have created all the ellipse actually that you have created and just select it and just press it down and that's it you don't have to do anything else make sure that the frame bounds are resized again so just use this resize to fit and just move this body down like this here also just move it down here nice so this will become your second stage very easy right now let's quickly build the third stage so in the third stage what is happening is the angry bird is hitting the balloons and it's going out okay and the spring again that you're seeing here it needs to be extended so select all the ellipse that you have created and basically just scale it up so as i was explaining you right this spring goes up so explain that it's just expanding and our uh, birdie is out of the artboard but we have used clip content so it's not visible so which basically means it's colliding with the uh, balloons okay so now let's build the fourth stage of our animation so in the fourth stage what happens is basically the collision happens and there's an explosion so to build that explosion we are going to use lottie files so if you haven't heard of lottie files i have explained that in details in my older videos so go and check it out what we are going to do is we are going to pull out a gif animation of explosion and gonna put it here okay so let me search something like boom and it will give you some results here i think this is the one that i like so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna select this and the background is actually uh, green so we don't want a green background so what we want is we want a transparent background so just use this and give it a transparent background now this animation is good now i want to place this in my artboard so i will use convert to gif first of all cool so we have our gif here okay so it has created a gif out of that animation that we were seeing in lottie and it has a transparent background exactly what we need you can basically resize as well if you want but this is exactly what we need now what i wanted i want to place it on top here but once it collides i need to remove a few of the bubbles so few of the bubbles must be removed so that it explains sort of an explosion 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these few bubbles that we have here. I'm going to select these few of the bubbles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to hit K on my keyboard. I'm going to scale it down to a really small size. Or I can come here basically I can give something like a two size. It becomes really small, not visible. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place them um, outside of the artboard. So they are there but I just moved them outside of the artboard so it looks like that they have exploded and they are removed now and now I'm going to place my explosion in the center something like this okay so this is the explosion part now the spring is also very important you need to understand that as well so what I'm going to, now we have to do is the spring was an expanded state now it should be in the compressed state lower than this original state so I'm going to select everything now again the same way we have done it for the older ones. So now the fourth stage is done and in the fifth stage the collision stops. So basically your GIF will be gone and what I've done is just to give it a little bit more of a realistic touch. I've made sure that these balloons fall down. So these were not exploded but they fell down. So I'll just move them down. After that, we also have to make sure that we move the spring a little bit up. So as to make sure that that realistic thing is still maintained. So it'll go a little bit up now. Okay. Now it's losing the momentum. So just oscillating between different stages. So you can see like this. Okay. And as I said, just resize the entire frame. Now we have all the frames ready. Now what we need to do is we need to quickly patch this up using our prototyping tabs. So let's quickly do that. So we are in the prototyping mode right now and we have to wire this entire thing up. Now as I told you in the beginning that it took me a lot of trial and error to fix out the different settings for the different prototyping that we are going to use in between the screens. So these are the basically the final settings that I'm going to tell you. So I'll explain a little bit why I did those things but it's totally up to you actually to figure these things out on your own. So just experiment it out and figure out the different setting that works for you in your case. But these are settings that work at least for this game. Okay. So in the first what we need to do is we want that when we press this uh, bird down, when we press this angry bird down on the spring, uh, we should come to this stage. So basically what we have to do is select the bird and connect it to the second screen. And instead of on click, we want on drag. That's why we will be able to, that's how we'll be able to actually drag it down. Okay. So on drag, navigate from the first to the second, smart animate. Now you can use ease out back because this gives a little bit more of a springy animation. So that's why I'm using ease out back. And instead of 500 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds is too much. It will be too slow. So I'm going to give 200 milliseconds. So we want to be able to pull these things down really quickly. So that's it. And the first interaction is ready. We are basically we are pulling this down and we're coming to this stage. Okay, now from this stage to this stage, what should happen is, so I'm going to select this one and after, so from here you cannot do a release thing. So I wanted this to release automatically. So what we have to do is we'll just select from here to here, second to third, and instead of on click, it should be after delay. Okay. And after delay, we want that this to be released after we pressed it down, it automatically releases in hundreds milliseconds. So we just give it a 100 millisecond time. So after 100 millisecond, it will automatically move up. Okay, we we'll go to the stage. So now we get to three, smart animate. And now here we want ease out, only ease out, not ease out back because we want the linear motion. We don't want a springy motion, at least for this guy here. So we want it to be going really smoothly on top. Okay. So now ease out and something like 300 milliseconds. So it gives a little bit, it gets a little bit nice and slow. So you can observe the entire thing. So this is the second settings. Now from here again. So by the way, from here till here, everything happens automatically. So the first two, first two screens are the screens where you require a drag input, but rest should all be a after delay automatically. Okay. I'm just gonna connect this. And again, we don't want on click. We want after delay. And again, from here to here, we want the explosion to happen really quickly. So we don't want 800 milliseconds of time. So we just want 10 milliseconds. So that very quickly explodes. As soon as it hits, it should explode really quickly. Navigate to four, smart animate, ease out, and 
200 milliseconds so i checked out this 200 millisecond works out well because this animation of explosion happens in 200 milliseconds so that's why i kept it 200 milliseconds so that after this animation is exactly complete we move out of this frame to the next one okay so that's why 200 milliseconds and this is the last frame that we need to add so let's connect this again same after delay and we want ease out at 200 milliseconds so we should be moving from here to here in 200 milliseconds after this is ended as i explained and we have navigate to the fifth frame smart animate ease out and we want this to be moving in a really slow manner so i'll I'm gonna give 800 milliseconds by the way you can give it something around 500 as well but 800 felt really smooth for this uh, spring motion okay so now all our five frames are done now as i said again just try it out these settings for yourself just try out different values here instead of ease out use ease in or linear or ease in ease out you'll understand the difference between the different animations okay so now that we are done let's quickly see how our prototyping is working so we're in the play mode and let's see how this looks like so let me just pull it down and voila this looks so good right let me just pull it down again and by the way uh, in the second frame what i did i just made these circles a little bit smaller so that when you pull everything down right you get a little bit animation on top as well so if you see the bubbles are also moving when i'm moving this entire thing so that's what you can do a little bit of touches you can do a lot of other things you can also add a lot of background and this is how it works pull it down it moves up also the angry bird also rotates actually if you have noticed you see this notice it really well that also moves up and you have also balloons falling down you have the nice explosion happening and everything looks so great and that's it guys that's it for today's video if you like this video do give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it takes me a lot of time to record this entire tutorial i had a lot of fun i hope you had a lot of fun too just go and experiment it out you can build a lot of things do crazy experiments and you can come up with your own new game now that you know the basics of it do share this video with others and i'll come up with a new game in the next video so stay tuned and i'll see you in my next video take care bye bye